In those days, and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up into David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely, and this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests and Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If you could break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and there should not be day or night in their seasons, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither can the sand or the sea of the sea be measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of my Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what the people have spoken, saying, Two families which the Lord has chosen, he hath even cast them off? Thus they have... Uh, despise my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of the seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy upon them. And obviously... In this message of Jeremiah to the king, um, obviously, uh, <laughs> from the line of David, the branch, Jesus, rose up to reign over heaven and earth, where he reigns today. The Lord established it. He predicted it. He prophesied out of Judah, the house of David, and... Uh, you know, the Levite priests are his ministers. And this is basically the political, military, religious um, cabal, if you will, of that time ordained by God. But that the key to that reign of David could only be fulfilled in the advent of Jesus, the branch, the son of righteousness, who would come to rule over heaven and earth in his day and thus the covenant would no longer uh, require sacrifices and you know daily sacrifices for for day and night night and day and for all eternity god becomes the light he becomes the day he becomes the night he is the uh it would be the equivalent of with jesus reigning over heaven and earth it's the equivalent of church 24 hours a day. It is basically um, the gathering because all who are of that spirit are already gathered and we recognize each other on the way as I recognize people that write in uh, letters. I have uh, several letters uh, regarding the um, psychopath uh, and I think that uh, Trish will be reading those on uh, the Z, F, and T on Saturday. She'll be reading those live. And these letters are both a confirmation of um, people that have suffered with, with and, and how am I segueing into this? What my point is, is that um, Jeremiah prophesied that there would be a branch that would rule over heaven and earth and thus fulfill the covenant and period. And it's done. And that covenant is fulfilled. And Jesus reigns over heaven and earth and is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, but also is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world, who also is the king, who also is the uh, the one on the throne, who also ultimately is the creator. He has done this so that you and I actually are in fellowship in church, if you will, 24 hours a day um, forever and, and eternally. I mean, that's, I think, what the Bible is trying to tell us. 
because if the sacrifice was taken away, then this exterior churchianity hypocrite thing would be taken away as well. There'd be no need because the fidelity toward God would be 24-7. There would be no distraction. The flesh distracts, yes, and then you just have to get back on the horse. I mean, you... It's, if your heart keeps desiring the Lord, then you keep going off with the flesh and then back to God, off with the flesh, then back to God. And eventually, the two become one, you know, through time. Uh, you know, where your um, heart is, there your treasure shall be. And if your heart is with God, then your treasure will be with God. And if your treasure is with God, then you have inherited eternity. Then there is no death, there is no night, there is only light. And everything that, everything that is comes forth with God's light and lights the way. This is a multidimensional existence. You enter in and uh, you don't want to leave. You don't want anything else. That's the only thing you're going to want. That makes all the, um, you know, the, the movies and everything about after death pale. It, those pale by comparison to what the real truth is, that a multidimensional reality is far more interesting and far more satisfying than a single dimensional reality as we have today. A multidimensional reality spans time and space, uh, has form and yet doesn't have form, has multiple forms, has multiple incarnations, multiple everything. Uh, whatever is required, whatever is going on is, is fulfilled at all times. I think once you get into that state, you would never come back to this. Once you've seen Zion, you're not going to come back to the profane world. Once you've entered in, you do not want to come out. <clears throat> Once you become multiple, uh, you know, uh, um, multidimensional, you do not want to become single dimensional again with amnesia because people here know everything in their holographic state, which is the multidimensional glorified body state. But, however, they can't recall anything. We all know what each other knows. Uh, you know, that's why angels don't quibble because they all know everything. Everyone, everyone knows everything. So, you know, they just each have their function. And that's a great relief to me. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm definitely ready to have my function and just do that rather than wondering and worrying and having this kind of subject objected self-analysis, self-regard, reflection, going over the past, having dreams and things haunting from the past into the present, um, things that I cannot control, things that um, I worry about, but I, you know, and also visitation, um, you know, beings, spirits, demons, spells, witchcraft, coming at night, disturbing sleep, leaving, you know, fighting these invisible wars, having runs of bad luck, good luck, no luck, um, good fortune, bad fortune, health, sickness, sudden reversal, sudden, you know, you're on eggshells, you don't know when the next shoe's going to drop. I, for one, am, have grown weary of this. I, I don't know about you. But, um, you know, I've gone beyond Buddhism. Far beyond. Because I realize that, and unless you want to say that um, all is already enlightened, and I would say, yes, um, I am already enlightened. It is already accomplished. The truth has been established. No, it's not a void, Buddhist. Sorry. No, sorry, that's not it. That's your limited mind unable to grasp the... Um, you can meditate all day long. You can even, even understand that the perceiver, what is being perceived, i.e. consciousness, is uh, connected to the whole. You can get to the point of single point of consciousness uh, like the siddhas do. Uh, if release the kundalini spirit, no thank you, not necessary, the chakras have always been open, etc., 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 on and on and on and on and on. All of this ignorance that we get steeped in, all these religious gimmicks that uh, that are plague India for all these centuries, uh, no, and yet no peace, and China, and, you know, the whole Eastern thing, you know, with having wisdom on the one hand, but uh, being... Having the gates closed on the other it would be a, you know, I guess that's the bane of Asian existence. But to become a stupid Muslim, well, I can understand reacting from Hinduism, Buddhism, 
Taoism, etc., cetera, uh, and some of the Eastern um, aspects of Zen in Japan and various other uh, familial piety and all that, to transfer that to Muhammad, I guess I can understand, you know, the reaction uh, against the Eastern religion and going to this Western monotheism and, and, you know, jumping like that. I guess I could understand that. Needing to have a strict set of rules so there isn't this amorphous, <clears throat> elusive enlightenment that never comes to anybody. Um, if you want to pass with Zen, all you have to do is just say, um, no Zen and no master, as I've said, and then uh, you win the game, you get the prize. The master bows down to you and... Um, uh, takes your cup of tea away and says, uh, we don't have to play that game anymore. And um, says, there's nothing more I can do for you. You obviously have seen through the game here. There is no master. There is no Buddha. And there is no Zen. Thank you. What about stilling the mind? If you put your mind on God, Yahweh, Creator, your mind will be stilled automatically because he won't want you looking back in time, forward in time, front and back are gone, side to side are gone. So there's just this peace that surpasses understanding. And that peace is what, you know, they, they seek in the East. But the, the connection to Yahweh, Creator, to the Absolute, is the thing that's missing in the East. And this connection made possible by the... the, 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 the uh, the sacrifice of the Lamb, Yeshua, ends up um, connecting us to all that is in a multidimensional way. So there's more to it. But in that multidimension, you would be, in the East, they would call that perfect meditation because there is no front or back consciousness. There's nothing to, you know, what, what the East needs to realize is that what they're talking about in Buddhism and Hinduism is overcoming. They want to overcome the you know, fallen state of mind, the jumping around state of mind, the nervousness, the, the, you know, that's uh, most, most Christians that practice Zen, for example, are trying to incorporate the lessons of Jesus and the compassion and all that into their Zen meditation and bring the two together. But what they fail to understand is that um, God is also a God of war and there is a Zen aspect to war. You know, there's a there's a um, there's a there's a Zen aspect to, I suppose, religion, in the sense that to really do it right, one has a sense of detachment. And I'll take that further. Detachment, what the Buddhists seek is actually no self-regard and no self. Jesus is all about no self, but his purpose, not ours. You know, there is no mystery or amorphous void that you have to go to any master to figure out. The only master is Jesus, but then he is creator. So you see the whole mystery unfolds perfectly with perfect symmetry. And yes, according to the East, you would be enlightened, but then you're beyond enlightenment. Because you're caught up in the amorphous Shekinah glory, which is the, uh, the very seed of creation. And so, therefore, you are part of all things at the same time, a single point, which is um, something that uh, cannot be achieved through meditation, asceticism, renunciation, although all those things are part of the Christian walk, especially renunciation, no connection to the world system, um, radicalism, a spiritual radicalism that most, I don't know anyone in this country really who actually, well, I know a few, um, I met a few who actually practice true Christianity, would never be in a church or anything like that because it's too radical for that. It's um, a total detachment from the world system, which is what the Buddhists seek. And that's why Zen and Christianity can actually work together very well. But those who practice it tend to idolat have idolatry towards Zen a little bit um, in that the practice becomes a something where the practice in, in true Christianity, the practice of being still would be nothing. It would be just automatic. It's, a, it's just a part of the walk. It's, there's nothing to learn in that regard. It's something that the Lord gives you. It's not something you practice. 
practice. <laughs> That's not even a word. Well, pretty soon my heater should shut off. You know, it does make a terrible noise, I have to admit, but I mean, I'm, I'm grateful it's here. And yeah, we've had to have the heat. Uh, and I don't think this would do too well in really cold weather. I guess I better get ready to wander southward for the winter, huh? Like the birds <laughs> going southward for the winter. Um, so I did get, you know, quite a bit of feedback, uh, including a sister who had, before giving her life to Christ, said she was just about exactly like the picture that I portrayed of uh, the psychopath mother. And, um, you know, the, the idea of preying upon her children like a vampire, making sure they never develop, never become anything, so that they're kind of like, it's kind of like um, people that prey on their children, sort of like a black widow. They tie them up and they feed off, you know, for food. And it's important that they never become anything in life so they can be blamed later, you know, in other words, so that that parent can say, look, they're a loser, and uh, look at all the trouble I've been through as a martyr. And they, the children, are a loser. And boy, they've really put me through a lot. And I've just been nothing but the perfect mother. Can't you see that? And they play that political game so that everyone looks at them like, oh, you're the perfect mother. And those, those ungrateful kids, by God, they ought to be punished. Yes. Well, I'm not going to punish them because I am the great mother. And I don't do things like that. Meanwhile... This whole thing is roiling underneath and the children are being, if they don't know that they're dealing with a psychopath mother, they are being destroyed. I did get a letter from someone who says they have been a psychopath mother or they feel that they've done that sin of preying upon their children like a vampire, but then they repented later. And I'm here to say the Lord has forgiven you. Actually, the Lord miraculously has healed you, but you are not a psychopath in the sense that you, you are not without remorse. You have to understand something. You, sister, are different. You're not without remorse. You're not without feelings. You're not without guilt. You're not without shame over the issue. You're not without responsibility. A psychopath feels none of those things, ever and never, and they never repent. You have to understand something. These are monsters I'm describing, not you. You tried to take responsibility, say so you identified with this, but you you have done some things, but one you must understand, and when you did them, perhaps you didn't feel any guilt, but you felt you were owed something from your children, from the world, whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is the psychopath doesn't change. You know, the psychopath is basically a monster put on the earth, you know, and also belongs to it's you know, the satanic army. There are many of them, but the traits are they feel no guilt. You know, they interview people. One of the stages, and I need to go through this again with the video and sort of stop it and, and, and really explain it. And I think I'll do that before the show on uh, um, Saturday. But see, what they do is they... What does this have to do with Jeremiah and the establishment of Jesus? Uh, I just had to riff on this whole um, bringing it all together beyond religion once one more, and then now that's done, and I'm on to this topic. We can do, you know, chew bubble gum and 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 uh, pedal backwards on a unicycle at the same time, can't we? <laughs> Uphill, yes, <laughs> in San Francisco. That's got to be one of my favorite cities, San Francisco. Yeah. If I was ever going to live in um, California again, which I can't imagine, um, for any reason, given the you know political state and you know the, 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 the what what the people are doing is they're they're just basically eating their own guts at this point, and they're going to die by their ideology. They're going to die. They're just going to go completely down to riots, you know, bankruptcy. Mil I see the military tanks on the streets of L.A. I see uh, and and all the cities. I see a complete total abject fail i can't even watch anymore but it's it's uh but of all the cities and the climate and everything i like san francisco with its cold summer with its big fog banks rolling in 
with you know the kind of light that you have it's a different kind of light up there than southern southern california is kind of washout light you know but when you're up there it's more contrasty you know i like contrast that's why i'm in new mexico obviously because it's a it is complete total opposites colliding here you know deep cerulean blue up against bright orange and you know and you know uh, and 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 red dirt and 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 green junipers and puffy you know intense white clouds and you know uh and you know high altitude yet cactus with bright red blooming flowers and yellow flowers on the cacti and uh you know it's um you know and you know we've got scorpions and rattlesnakes and um you know all kinds of stuff and 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 rodents and things you have to fight off you know but it's in the end it's you know the trade-off is worth it because i get to to drink this beauty and this 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 intensity what just makes me feel closer to god because i can touch the clouds i can i can touch the sky here and then i feel that brings me you know that's just brings me into a closer thing with Lord. Yeah, they have it in Colorado. You're up in the mountains there. I'm sure you have any of you who have gone to the mountain states. I'm sure you have that. That's what's what's nice about the mountain. I guess that's where the mountain plays such an important role in the Bible. It's always going up the mountain to see God, right? And I guess in a in a way that's true. And perhaps like Elijah, I like the junipers and the crows and the very and the ravens and the you know. I mean, that's because we have a lot of that here. I mean. When I catch all the mice, I throw them out there for my friends, the crows, and they come right down and scoop them up, and just happy as can be. We have a little system going. So, the psychopath, okay, the psychopathic personality does does not feel guilt but imitates feelings of guilt, will imitate a feeling of remorse. But it's not real. It's they've learned to imitate. Sometimes these psychopaths become that because of trauma in childhood. Perhaps a lot of the time they're, they're abused horribly and they're traumatized and then they change, it, you know, and they something dies within them. That human part of them dies and they become the psychopath. But also these are born this way. You know, I, I, most of them are actually born, not made, if you will. They're not, it's not a natural occurrence. I mean, I've been traumatized. I did not become a psychopath. I feel intense guilt and shame over everything. And unfortunately, um, I've envied the psychopath from time to time because I, if I set that aside, I could have really gone somewhere in life, you know, but it's, 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 it's guilt, shame, feelings, empathy, picking up other people's feelings, just all that chatter has hurt a lot. But you see, the psychopath needs someone like me because I'm the perfect host. I'm the perfect victim. And so there's an interview phase and they interview you to see if you'll be their victim. And then they start buttering you up and all that. And then before you know it, you're in the trap. I guess I wouldn't be now because my, my, my heart is with the Lord and, and he's taken over that damaged, broken part of me. Now it's damage. It's just pure damage. And sometimes psychopathic, uh, you know, parents will, you know, damage their children so that they can feed off them. Um, but the goal is always the same. You know, there's a string of bodies behind every one. It's never their fault. There is never any admission of guilt. There is only vanity. People are only around to reflect the vanity of that person. There is no concern for anyone else. Anyone who can't serve that role is dismissed. And eventually the psychopath will turn even on those people that stroke them. Um, they will, they will you know, pit them against one another because they feed off that trauma. In other words, they'll, let's say there's someone that has an old person with money and they have servants and they're, 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 they're all saying, oh, how beautiful you look, how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are. And they're you know, talking and they're giving all this attention. The psychopath is thinking, what an idiot. Taking the attention, enjoying it, but thinking, I have no respect for you. Because anyone who strokes them, of course, has got to be a fool. So then they think nothing of destroying that person, either through false rumors, uh, claiming they've stolen things that they, they haven't done, calling their um, domestic agency and saying they, they're a thief, trying to ruin their reputation publicly and leave them, you know, unemployable. 
Um, uh, you know, I've seen that over and over again. I, I can just tell you it's, um, but it's always the same motive. So that psychopath can hide so that no one will find out that they are different than, you know, the humans. They are different than the rest of us. There's something different that they want to keep that secret. And that's the most important thing, that nobody finds out what they really are. So they're very good. at They win in court. They can shift the blame to others. They're, they're good at going up the ladder. They're very successful in, uh, in life in general and usually very wealthy. And, um, you know, all of this because the wealth helps them to hide. That's why it's so important. Money is so important because they need to actually hide. And, um, but I've seen, like what I've seen is, you know, and uh, uh, I remember one time, you know, that I've, you know, just in, in going through it, you know, it's not untypical to have, uh, where I've seen like, you know, French royalty and they'll get the servants together and hide Easter eggs, and then they get a thrill out of seeing these idiots hunt for the Easter eggs, just obsessed with maybe there'll be a little money in one of them, you know. And they go, "Oh, isn't that cute?" Like, like little, like little pets. I've seen the same thing with, um, you know, what sort of. And, and I know one of you is a great fan of Stevie Nicks, but when I I saw her here, I unfortunately had a, a seat that was right in front, and everyone. The whole crowd jammed the stage, so I couldn't see anymore. So I, I actually had to leave after about a half an hour. But at first, I saw Stevie Nicks on stage. I'm not saying she's a psychopath. I'm just saying this is a typical psychopathic thing. She started like petting all the fans, like little, like little pets, like kind of like doing this petting gesture. And I, it, I don't know, because I'm very sensitive to to some of these sort of things. I just got uh, turned and, you know, my stomach sort of turned and I, I just sort of eventually left. No, I mean, she's fine. I mean, if you like um, her music, um, she's on her game doing just as well as she's always done, you know, good for her. But I, it's got nothing to do with her. It just was this gesture of petting people like on the head, you know, that brought back the same, you know, elite snobbery that psychopath, you know, has to to instill they have to be superior to everyone in the room they have to be the you know make the entrance um another uh one of our listeners has written a letter that you know sort of paralleled my own experience with psychopath and point by point by point regarding her mother and you know what what's going on and she said it's just exactly like in the in the film sunset boulevard norma desmond who when the people came to foreclose on her house and take her house away and all that, she felt they were the big movie producers coming to put her in, in the biggest role of her life and she was posing for her close-up and that is exactly it. That is, the, she is the quintessential psychopath. Another one in, the, in, the, in entertainment and movies and in, in theater is Long Day's Journey Into Night, a role that was played by Katherine Hepburn in uh, the Eugene O'Neill play, which also became a movie. Long Day's Journey Into Night, and um, the central figure is the mother who is the psychopath who controls, who actually what's happened is she's weakened all the men. She, she has weakened them and then preys upon them once they're weak. The psychopath cannot really handle being around any kind of real man, you know, anyone who displays, uh, you know, those, the, the, you know, qualities of a man, of good, a good qualities of a man would be a nobility, no, nobleness, forthrightness, righteousness, you know, those, when they're manly traits, you know what I mean by manly righteousness? You know, there's a, there's a manly kind of righteousness that is the opposite from sort of an effeminized um, state of submission, okay, to society in general, so that they can move up the ladder. And they're, they're, am I making that clear? Well, they can't handle that. John the Baptist would have been that person that was noble and righteous and and the, the the women you know the woman psychopath Salome was obsessed with having his head on a platter perfect psychopath and not only guilt but dancing all the while perfect exactly and we see this over oh, oh yes we see this a lot in in royal circles wealthy circles uh especially politics and also religion um quite common uh you know, so I would just say that uh, if you are have been victimized by a psychopath, if your mother or father is a psychopath, for example, you you have to you have to get away because they'll destroy you. 
um, I know people that are around, say their mothers who are psychopaths, and they're around for five and they become triggered. They fall back to old patterns. They, they get uh, in, in, they become completely immobilized, unable to do anything. I mean, you know, the, the, if you need to heal, you know, there's only one remedy because there is no solution. You're not dealing with a human. You got to understand that there is no solution. You must, it must be cut and there must be a complete blackout of communication if, if you want to heal, in order for you to heal, not to punish the psychopath. The psychopath is like a shark. You, you don't, I have compassion, my, my feeling about psychopaths since I've been surrounded by them my whole life um, is, uh, and yeah, they put hits on me and I've been poisoned and a lot of things have happened. And the worst was, uh, you know, being like, 17 years old and winding up in a coma in Denver, um, that was a hit, you know, that by my people, you know, on me. And uh, I guess I never, now that I've really had confirmation that that's what happened, um, that's a hard one, huh? That your own family will want you dead and actually pay for it. Hmm. Well, don't be born into a mafia family then. Don't be born into, um, you know, right? That's Because uh, that's kind of it. I mean, it's sort of like this. You can't have people talking like like I am here. <laughs> you can't have, the, you'd write the truth. So that's why. I mean, there's a, there's a practical reason why um, kids that don't sort of conform to that reality get eliminated because they can't afford to have the pedophile network exposed, you know, or the murder network exposed, the sort of Bryce Taylor testimony exposed for, but if, just imagine if you had all the kids who are, you know, like pure hearts and lambs who didn't get killed, who came forward and said, this is what's going on. It, it would be, it would be just totally shocking and horrific. I mean, it would change all of society. And for you to know that um, your wealthy families are all criminals. Well, I'm just thinking back to the families I've known. Okay, the Huntington family stole land and stole the railroad, right? Doheny family out there in California, very big Doheny, same thing. Others through drugs, liquor, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> various um, Kennedy family. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> Kennedy family um, running liquor, you know, contraband. Others I've known running weapons. Others I've known human trafficking of children, which was going on uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and on and on and on, and how people got their wealth. Some of these old established families, um, you think they're noble because they have foundations, but the beginning usually. You come up through the, because the whole world is like the mafia. So to become wealthy and to have them, <clears throat> if you were going to try to become wealthy on your own without them, you'd have to be pretty, you still have to find a way to protect yourself or somehow they will try to take your money. So money is like the root of all evil because these people all are obsessed with it. It's idolatry, but I mean, it causes people to want to have a private club and let no one in the club unless they bow down. <clears throat> you bow down, they'll let you be wealthy. It's like that. So people who go against it or family that have children that go against it, uh, the family themselves will rub out that child to protect their own interests. That makes sense? So you take the whole spiritual battle out of it. You know, oh, I got to kill that one because they belong to Jesus. We can't have that. That's, that's not what's on their mind. They don't care about Jesus. They don't think about the devil. None of that. It's basically they're in the way of our prosperity they got to go, put the hit on them, period. Oh, well, boo-hoo, grow up, you know, get with it or be persecuted. It's your choice, son, daughter, don't you get that? Oh, you want to do the right thing? Well, good luck. You should have been born to a poor family then. Um, no, I, I, I have a lot more I could say about all this and there's, you know, I, I've, I've, um, 
there's a you know a lot of detail that I could go in, but I think you know my own Bryce Taylor moment will come later. I really think it should be in a book form and not just you know. But but at the same time, I do say a lot, and um, and I say enough. Uh, I say what I have to say to to protect myself. The more pub really is it? Why is he on the internet? Because. In a sense, this is my survival. I couldn't have survived without the internet. I wouldn't be here right now. This is my survival. You're dealing with psychopaths, and yeah, they will kill you. And laugh about it later. Trust me on that. My trauma was that, that you know, my own family and friends would put a hit on me. And then, you know... I've tried to get them to repent on it and I've tried, I've confronted them, you know, directly and, and, you know, gotten confirmation that, yeah, that's what happened. But I mean, I ran into the actual guy that was hired to do it, you know, years later, um, here in Santa Fe, Max. And of course that shut them all up when I mentioned Max and, you know, cause they don't know what Max has told me, but I mean, I, he wouldn't do anything without being paid, put it that way. He was a made man. Uh, he didn't need to be a teacher at this college. But he was the music teacher. He had also composed some scores. He had connections to Hollywood. You know, he was obviously the man in Denver at that time to uh, take care of this little family problem, my existence. So he was the assassin. And yet I survived the coma. And, you know, they, the, the, the plan then was to just put me away in some facility so and tell me that I was psychotic or wrong or whatever that nothing like that ever happened that I did it all that it's nobody else's fault and then you know forget about me and just have me you know maybe put me on a farm somewhere in the midwest and so you know I was told don't ever come back to LA and then when I did come back to LA of course to find out what happened first thing I heard was that the rumor that my own family put out was that he's I died well, that was to get the heat off them. Yeah, they took care of it. That's the rules. Yeah, that may be harsh for you to hear that, <clears throat> but think how it is for me. To have your own, and even to have friends, my own age, peers, also take part in it. They took part in it. And they took part in it later when uh, Trish and I left L.A. The same people put the same hit on both of us. And all our friends were them and paid by them. And even here, I'll take it a step further. We've had actors come here. Actors in the so-called loony bin, which were private facilities that weren't even... And then later on, I find out that facility never even existed in one case. That there was no... It was some, some ruse, some setup. And all the people there were actors. William Peter Blatty wrote a thing like that called The Ninth Configuration, where everybody there was an actor trying to help this guy get over his trauma, I guess, from Vietnam or whatever, and he goes crazy and kills a bunch of people. But it was just a very interesting... What, what was it? Why, why was that interesting to me? Because I had found out that was the thing. I found out all this stuff. Everything that was held secret, I found out. You'd have to be a psychopath feeling no guilt. Can you imagine... I mean, I'm just th sitting here thinking, could I imagine putting a hit <clears throat> on my daughter? who, you know, I love and, and, and have, have loved from the very beginning and only want the best for her. And I want her to be, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want her to do anything. I, want, I don't have any agenda I want her to do. If she wants to be a clerk in a store or shoot pictures or, you know, um, be Mother Teresa, I don't, I, you know, or, or, or just uh, do nothing. It, you know, it doesn't matter to me, you know, I, I'm her father. Cannot even imagine what kind of state of mind you'd have to get to to put a hit out on a kid because they're because they're a good kid, because they're intact and because they did not become a psychopath. That would be ultimately the reason they put a hit on them is because they did not die to the human part of themselves. And then the wider question becomes: So what's the Grateful Dead? And and by the way, you skeptics out there who think I'm not, I'm telling you exactly the truth. And it's bizarre, more strange than fiction. But I am telling you exactly the truth. I mean, there is no, not even no embellishment, no nothing to this. And when you blend the money, 
power, which is just real, more important than money, but money and power go together. It breeds psychopaths. It breeds psychopathology, which is why in politics you can have, uh, you know, well, you see Obama, they've, they've called him very cold. He doesn't seem to care about death or, or people suffering. He just wants to be the smiling guy that everyone adores, narcissism. He is the classic perfect psychopath, and he, he doesn't have any feeling of empathy. He is not human in that sense. He is completely inhuman. He has no... He fits the profile even better than Bill Clinton, which I never thought we'd get a better psychopath than Clinton. But, you know, Bush was pretty good. But but Obama takes the cake. They would not let anyone but themselves run for president, just like me. I had to become, you know, the same thing as Obama in order to succeed there. You see, I didn't. Because my interior core was just... I mean, the thought of anything like that back then, um, I wouldn't... I just felt like I was in a nightmare that, you know, that I must be mentally ill and I blame myself and I, and I hurt myself all these years, even up until recently, I blame myself for my parents' unhappiness. I blame myself for my friends unhappy, you know, for people around, you know, extended family. I have, I blame myself that I, when I'd be around them, I'd be, yeah, I'm the bad guy. I'm the black sheep. I'm the, the one that made everything screwed up. I'm, I'm the one that's really messed up on drugs. I'm the one that's really screwed up. I would be taking that blame in front of psychopaths. My God, they must have had a laugh at me, huh? And that was all untrue. I mean, compared to me, they're untold, unfathomable proportions well, not just more sinful, but monstrous. And, and so so me apologizing to them continually, whether they're around or not, you know, just taking the blame for everything that happens was conditioning by the psychopath so that I would be the scapegoat and take the blame for everything so they could just dump on me. And they do even, you know, now. But I no longer apologize, friends. I have finally gotten to that level of healing after 57 years. I stopped apologizing a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you've watched me develop here. You're watching me heal. I can have no contact with anyone in that category, none, because I realize that it's, it, it, it's, it's completely destroyed me psychologically, completely destroyed me emotionally. I've been destroyed over the years by others, and then I thought it was me. And I blame myself the whole time when it was my involvement with this kind of entity that uh, destroyed me. I've lost a lot of years, you know, thanks to them. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I, forgive, yeah, uh, to me, I was so damaged about 10, 15 years ago that, you know, the idea of me functioning as a human being is really my goal. You know what I mean? Not not succeeding in the world because I don't, you know, understand the world. I mean, if it's a time thing, why why even bother? But <clears throat> in, I mean, that's the way I think. I'm sorry. It's just, I've seen through that too. But um, yeah, that's well. Thank God for the trauma. Or I wouldn't have seen through it. But I've been traumatized, literally, throughout my entire life, all the way through today. Uh, it's the trauma is still there. It's not, it's, I'm not completely healed yet. It's, I'm still trauma. I mean, I can communicate with you, which makes you think, oh, there's nothing wrong with him. Oh, there is a lot wrong with me. I don't have a, um, the only real complete person. I mean, I'm still traumatized from this idea that, that you'd be killed for being an, a person uh, for existing I didn't understand you know, how teachers, parents, uh, siblings, and peers would actually want, would actually just, I, I just don't understand that, especially if you're like a nice per, you know, I'm a very, you know, uh, uh, what would you call, affable, you know, but that didn't matter. I'm still trying to get my mind around that. I don't see how a parent or, you know, peers in high school and you know, could, you know, trying to get someone to commit suicide. 
Then again, I used to go to church and they'd tell me that I put the nails in Jesus' hands and feet. And, you know, I, it never set well with me because I thought, would I really do that? You know, I questioned myself. Would I really put the, weren't there people that didn't want to put the nails in his hands and feet standing around the cross and praying? I think I would have been one of those, wouldn't you? But I've had these Christians and they, you know, when they tell me they put the nails in the, then I realize, oh, they're on Satan's side and they're struggling with that and they're trying to be Christians. And so they, they are quick to say they put the nails in. I suppose, you know, sin puts the nails in. I mean, you could make it abstract like that. But I kept thinking, would I really put the nails in Jesus? Or would I see him like brethren, like, you know, family? I see John the Baptist and Jesus and the prophets and all that like family. Like, like not like something other over there that's not like me. I see them, you know, I'm maybe not as good as them in terms of righteousness, but I do, I see them as like, you know, family, like blood, It's hard to see the psychopath as blood, you know. I mean, the whole thing about that is, you know, the, the psychopaths, they don't like to, to engage each other, you know, acknowledging each other's psychopath. But there's like a silent recognition that, you know, they're kind of on the same page. In other words, you know, they go laugh at the funeral till the cameras are on. When the cameras are on, they start crying beautiful crocodile tears and then back to laughing and joking again. money being the almighty God. And then I've seen people get destroyed who, you know, aided and abetted or became the perfect victims thinking they were going to get some money by doing the bidding of the psychopath, i.e. to do harm, say, to someone like you or me. And then, and then them being blamed eventually, losing the game, and then being wrecked and even them committing suicide, you know, who are trying to, who are just money grubbing. I've seen that too. I've seen... um some really horrific things, some terribly horrific things. And like I say, if you're born into a situation like that, don't, th you know, and it, if there's a whole pedophile thing going on, um, they have no guilt whatsoever about involving you in it. It doesn't matter what age, three, four, five, doesn't matter what age. And they're protected because they're part of the, these elite networks. You know, there's always that pedophile that winds up in the prison, but he's not part of that network. You know what I mean? He's you know, the lone pervert out there somewhere. They lock them up and society goes, oh, we are taking care of the problem. They don't realize the system is preying upon the, you know, the, 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 the people who run the system are going to have their way. Well, they prey upon babies and children. They create wars and, 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 and strife. They do false flag terror attacks and think nothing of it. They think nothing of, you know, mass murder. Um... You know, and that, that not that they all become killers, but they all have that capability. And also they're hiding the fact that they know when another psychopath does something like, for example, 9-11, you know, but they would keep silent. They would be the first ones to say all 9-11 truthers are insane, should be locked up and are unpatriotic. And they would be right there, you know, praising the firefighters and they'd be right there at ground zero. They'd be having the uh, the ceremony. Satan loves to have people as unwitting dupes in front of the people who have killed them, worshiping them unwittingly. He loves that all day long. Loves it! Or getting people to inadvertently do his rituals who are not Satanists, but thinking that they're worshiping the Lord, actually worshiping him. And there's a lot of that kind of thing that goes on. He loves it. He loves it. What these people don't understand is that their, you know, maker, the one who actually gave them birth, you know, Yahweh gave them birth, but then Satan turned them into something else. So he's really their birth, their father. What they don't understand is he has no respect for them. He's just using them until he gets what he wants. He's going to kill them all. Take them all to hell with him, whatever. They're going to burn and suffer consciously, knowing. And their guilt's going to come back. 
here's the thing that psychopaths don't realize. The guilt, remorse, all those human shame and guilt is going to come back. The Lord will restore it as part of the punishment, as part of the judgment. Why do they prey upon, um, you know, Adolf Hitler? Okay, good example. Joseph Stalin, good example, you know. Um, and, and on and on and on like that. And then people in society worship these people. Why does that happen? Well, it's a pretty screwed up world, you know. Um, I think people envy the fact that they can ruthlessly do things without having guilt or remorse. I think people envy that, admire that. Also, they, they it's a signal to them to serve them, feeling they can't win, so they're going to become servants. But the servants don't understand that eventually they're going to become cannon fodder. They always do. Uh, all the servants become cannon fodder. The people that are that, that they're worshiping and adoring eventually throw them under the bus because they can't afford to have anyone find out what they're really all about. Anyway, um, for those of you who've suffered under this, I, the only solution I can tell you is, I, I don't, you know, from my own circumstances and my own upbringing, I don't seem, I'm angry, I think, but only when I think that I could have had a life here rather than a question mark. Like, I don't know even what this is. I, I'm angry at the sense that I was robbed all that time, that I, that I was told lies, so, so many lies. I was so confused. I couldn't like go to college and graduate and have a job, a career, whatever. But then later, the Lord has shown me that all those things, you know, lead to hell anyway. You know, that lead to pain and suffering. They don't they don't lead to, you know, happiness. I used to think that if I could just be like them, if they could just accept me, then I could get, you know, but there is no coming back. That you are what you are, and they can't accept anyone that's intact. You have to show them something. You gotta show them you're gonna play ball, and then they have no respect for you anyway. The pecking order is determined by how many bad things you've done and gotten away with and how little guilt you feel. Like if you've killed 50 people as an assassin, you know, and you could care less, uh, you know, that they respect that. You know, you'll probably get a good job. Um, why that is, I, you know, I, I've, look, I have tried to figure it out. My, my thing is kind of like the dude in the Big Lebowski. I just want to, I just want my rug back, you know. You know, I just want my um, life back. You know, and at the same time, I have my life. My life is Yah. My life is only the Lord. It's all it is. And in Him, I'm completely whole. No no damage, no nothing. 100% whole, 100% perfect in Him, but nowhere else. In the world, I'm, I suppose, damaged you know, traumatized, and I'm still traumatized. So, you know, uh, there's still post-traumatic stress from, um, you know, people around me attacking me, you know, setting me up, inviting me to be friends. And I think it's just like Carrie, when she went to the prom and thought she was going to be prom queen and really believed it was really true. And it was just a setup to pour Big's blood on her face and humiliate her in front of everybody. That's happened to me over and over, and it's traumatized me, where I was brought to a party or something, then everyone just humiliated me, and I didn't understand why. They were all, you know, part of that whole thing, and I, this has happened over and over. It's left um, not just scars, but tr post-traumatic stress to where I'm unable to really function. You know, um, my discernments. But on top of that, you know, there's the whole empathic thing where I'm able to, you know, very sensitive and pick up on other people's emotions and thoughts and things that, that, that it concern them, not me. But it's sort of like a bleed through thing where then I feel guilty and I feel like I need to go apologize to them, even if I don't know them. That's how bad it is. I'm just giving you a psychological portrait here. I feel I need to go apologize to them, even if I don't know them. Or like, I'm the really the bad guy. I've all, all those years, I said, I'm the bad guy. You know, I'm a real bad guy. I'm a, 
you know, the black sheep rebel bad guy. And turns out, no, that's not it. That's what was put on me to believe. It was a, a thing I was told that I had to be that or that that's what they labeled me. So I suppose from here on out, you're going to get a lot of, uh, you're going to get a lot of, um, let's just say, you'll be getting a different brand of, of broadcast. You'll be getting a lot of intense, who knows where it will lead. But I'm not apologizing for the truth. I'm not apologizing for for, for the, the damage done to me, you know, and, and, and that I haven't recovered from and I never will recover from in earthly terms, you know, um, just damaged goods. You know, and that's not a myth I'm living by. I'm seeking to heal. I have to kind of admit something before healing. You know, in other words, people say, you're Jesus, you got nothing to worry about. No, 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 no. This happened. I must heal from it. People did wrong and tried to hurt me. And even recently. I must understand it because I was in denial before and I just didn't believe it was happening even when it was happening. I could have been killed and not believed it was actually happening and then died and not believed it all the way into death. Not believe that, that someone was doing something like that. Um, you know, law enforcement, well, that'd be great. Where's the evidence? You can't go up against it. You know, I don't have any, anything like that. I just say the truth and, you know, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to what has gone on. There's a lot more to what has happened. There's a lot more to it all that, again, I didn't do. It was done to me. And yet, you know, the, the reputation I have is the, that I've done, I've been a bad person and I've hurt my family and other people and my friends terribly by being such a you know a drug user and, and these these institutions and all that 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 I got it was such a shame and embarrassment when then it was all engineered then they they were the ones that did it all not me it was all done on purpose for what purpose to uh, to set up a scenario where um the psychopath hides and is martyred and is is the the all the sympathy goes and i guess kids just ruin their parents that's another myth that you know these bad kids come and ruin their parents you know in my case my brother and i we both wound up in the same place the same kind of thing happened to both of us um you know psych wards this and that other things so I guess both of us, my brother and I, were both bad, 100% bad. And we ruined our parents and we ruined our extended families and we're, we were the problem, you know, 100%. In other words, two out of two. Gee, that's too bad. That's too bad, parents. You got two bad ones in a row. And that myth just simply isn't true. My brother was a victim. Well, he's not here to defend himself, is he? So he's, that's convenient. But no, I don't back down. I'm just, you know, this is all, even this podcast is a part of healing. Acknowledging that this reality actually does exist and things like this do happen. Most of the time, the psychopath just preys upon the children or preys upon others, and sometimes there are kids that pray that do prey upon their parents who are psychopath kids. That can happen too. I mean, it can happen anywhere, but the the usually they prey upon the victim before they're done with them, and you know they try to to make it last throughout the lifetime. So they just become a host for the parasite to to to, to live off of. You traumatize that kid, and then you live off that trauma. You live off that trauma. Plus, you get to complain that you're a victim and you've done everything for your child and 
gee, they just didn't turn out right and it's been so hard on you while you're actually the one that created the situation and feeding off that trauma, feeding off all that, 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 that hurt, feeding off the deaths or suicides, feeding off it, and then further widening it to get sympathy from the general society and boost it up of being such a good person in spite of such adverse conditions as having these awful kids. Perhaps this will help a child who is involved in something like that or help a parent who is involved in the reverse of it where, you know, you can have like a spouse-to-spouse abuse. You know, I mean, in the, all I can say is, is, you know, the psychopath doesn't mean to do all this. It's not like you or me doing bad things. There's no thought of bad there's no thought of guilt. There's no thought ever that there could ever be something wrong with the perpetrator doing uh, who set the whole thing up. They don't be- believe for one second that they have anything to do with it. They're just victims and innocent victims to boot. One case, a wealthy woman steals from herself to hide you know, whatever, assets to, to get, do something, oh, who knows why, blames it on the servants, then doesn't call the police. Oh, they just stole stuff. I'm sorry, I just don't have it anymore. I'm, I'm an innocent victim. You know, and then go out and ruin their reputation. Again, what happens is the psychopath disappears. No guilt. No, no, no suspicion, nothing. Psychopaths can also go take lie detector tests and lie and, and, and fool the, uh, fool the test. Cause there is no, you know, there is, there is no conscience, no guilt. There's nothing there that could ever rise up. And that is why I say that when, when a person is like that, they will not change ever. There is, I mean, it to be restored, it, they would have to become an actual human being meaning they, they'd have to be born from the womb almost. You know, the Lord just kind of tells me that they are, you know, the living dead is a real thing and that there is the living dead out there. And no, they laugh at uh, other people's problems. They laugh at people dying. They don't care. And I've, I'm, I'm not talking about just knowing a few of them. I've known hundreds of them. Like the society. So that's why I kind of differentiate between, oh, parents. No, no. Parents, friends, co-workers, siblings, the whole thing was like that. And you can't win. And even with this, there's no winning. Right now, I, I only say this testimony for two reasons. One, for my own healing, you know, to, 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 to understand. Because the trauma lessens and lessens. You know, it, it gets to the point that, uh, you know, the... the the flashbacks and things of, 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 you know, traumatic events. I mean, I've, I've been set up like Carrie over and over and over again, many times. And look, she flipped out with just one time. Me many, many, many times more worse than Carrie. People laughed at me and said, well, you were just born to suffer. You were just born to be abused. And just laughed. <laughs> That's your fate. <laughs> You're just born to be abused. <laughs> Pile on. <laughs> what an idiot. Public humiliation. Um, <laughs> you know, trying to, to, to degradate you, make you into... Uh, you know, throw, um, we always had jokes about fat whammies, you know, make you fat and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and a loser on the side of the road that you can be laughed and scorned. Yeah, you know, whatever it is, they'll, they'll go at it 24 seven. And so, but it's now it goes in the realm of gangsta gang, gang, the gang stalking is psychopathic. And when you have a wider society, that's all part of it. This creates each one as a psychopath. And then they, as a group, prey upon 
you know so it's not just the parents it's not the aunts and uncles it's not just the other siblings it's not just the people in high school it becomes this sort of elite society and they become gang stalkers to if one of their own is escaping or not with the program and not dead then they try to gang up until the person's driven to suicide that's the plan that's the usual treatment and of course there are handlers and controllers and professionals that get involved to help facilitate uh, it so that there's, you know, so that the system goes on without detection. So now the system becomes the psychopath. Well, now traditionally, what what I've said here is <clears throat> Satanist, because they do involve engage themselves in satanic ritual. Actually, the worship of Satan in secret in their groves, in their secret chambers, and in other places, they they, they worship their idols and they have their make their circles and they have their sacrifices and they they have their you know their orgies and their blood rituals and all their stuff they do you know according there are a lot of experts out there that can tell you what the satanic calendar is and and that all works together as well and then widen it even further it becomes the whole world is actually involved in it so now things become a little brighter it's not just one person over here. It's not just a parent over there. It's not just a kid over there. It's not just the, 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 the peer group over here. It's not just that guild over there. It's not just that fraternity or sorority or, you know what I mean? It, it, you start to see the whole thing. And I suppose the Lord is, uh, you know, I've had people say, well, I'm just thankful to God that they, that, you know, you were allowed to live, uh, allowed to live. Who would make such a statement like that to me? What do you know who made a statement like that to me? Did you know that people were not allowed to live? And if you did, spill it. Tell me everything. Tell me what you know. Are, are kids killed for not becoming psychopaths? Is that what you're saying? If that's true, this society is about done. I guess I'm here to tell you you know, what you're going to see the next few years is just, is going to traumatize even the psychopaths. That's how bad it's going to get. Because God won't put up with it. He's brought me as a witness. And I'm here to speak like Jeremiah spoke. And I'm here to tell you this is what's going to happen. If this is the fabric of our society, if it really is what I have described and widened because you see parents aren't involved in it and siblings are not involved in it and peer groups are not involved in it unless it's system wide as my mother always told me i quote i learned what the world was like and then i joined it or learned to get along with it that's what my mother taught me i mean there's no we could spend weeks on that one <laughs> and I'm not going there yet but i'm just saying uh, oh, and then, you know, when I, I'd say, well, you know, I go to a party or go to a thing, I'm invited to something and then I'm abused publicly by everyone there. I'm abused psychologically to the point where I start crying. And I, at one point I leave, I go out in the streets and I walk home from this humiliation from public humility. Oh, yes. I've been publicly humiliated and made into a laughing stock in public, like, like the guy in Full Metal Jacket. I mean, I've been made into a, um, you know, uh, some sort of, I don't know, something that people could just piss on and humiliate and abuse and lie to. And and I complain to my parents that this happened to me. And I was so traumatized, I didn't want to tell anybody because I was so ashamed. But it was like public raping, being raped by 50 people. And then... I uh, complained to my parents. I said, I, I just have to... The, the, they, they, they already knew. They go, well, how did it go? I was, I was, well, you know, it's your choice. You know, all that can stop tomorrow. What do you mean? Silence, you know, but I mean, they, it would always come down to that point. Well, perhaps you need a little more help to understand and then it would happen again, another setup. You know, another public humiliation, another public sort of whipping, you know, but done in their own gang-stalking-like way. 
So I know all about gang stalking. You also have the CIA involved, the military involved, military shrinks. You know, you have institutions. It, it goes wide, wide, wide. I mean, you've got all these people involved in aiding and abetting it. That's why none of these people would ever get in trouble for their murders, sorceries, pedophilia, none of it. You don't see human trafficking stopping, do you? They're involved in that. You don't see drug running stopping, do you? They're involved in that. You don't see gun running stopping, do you? They're involved in that. You don't see wars stopping, do you? They're involved in that. You don't see corruption in government stopping, do you? They're involved in that. You don't see uh, the end of psychopathic presidents, do you? No, they're involved in appointing those. So you, the public, become like me, the child, who didn't understand. Now you don't understand. Some of you who've woken up to 9-11 and different things as a conspiracy, and you're, you're trying to get your mind around it. Well, as my daughter told me, the odds on me being here and being able to even speak are billions and trillions and trillions and trillions to one against. So I have to think God ordained it. And that those who, who bless me are blessed and those who curse me, well, we've seen what's happened to them. No, I don't gloat over it. I'm not happy about it. I'm not a psychopath. I feel sorry for people that, you know, I tell them don't mess with me and then they laugh and then they do something and then you never hear from them again. You wonder what happened to them. It's like, I, it's almost like the reverse of Cain. I've got the mark of Cain <laughs> in a way. You know, where they're, where I'm the evil one, right? And they're the good ones. And that's the way it also becomes. The the song by Yes, I've Seen All Good People. I mean, I know this is just about, you know, the, 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 the you know, an innocent ritual and all that. But the point is, or the, what they think is, the point is um, they become the good people of society. They're the good people of the church. They're the good people of, the, they're, the, they're, the, they're the good people. And you who may disagree or become a victim and, and be made a laughing stock or, or a victim of scorn. It'd be like Carrie over and over again. You know, to be traumatized so much you can't even speak, to be thrown in these institutions and things. Uh, that's the good people of society taking care of these troubled souls who shouldn't really be allowed to have freedom and walk around and say things. Anyway, that's the game, man. And if you want to win at the game, you've got to become, let me just go beyond the psychopathic video that we had. And we, and I need to go through that too. I want to play some excerpts of that, uh, you know, coming up. It's on the page of ZefDaniel.com. But, you know, further to that, if you want to succeed exceedingly well, and you want all that to stop, you've got to become like them or agree to serve them. In so doing, you become a victim, yes, but not, I guess, you know, a laughing stock or traumatized or thrown darts. I mean, you, you know, they'll, they'll lay off you if they know that you're going to aid and abet them in their search for more victims. Because a victim creates power for them. Power can be used to magically attract money and sex and more power, which is really what they're obsessed with, ultimately. And, and, you know, and more vanity, which is the most, the ultimate obsession is vanity. And then a constant getting everyone to, they start spinning lies through repetition. These are the people that invented the idea of lying through repetition. And then when the public starts repeating the lie, Satan loves it. Oh, boy, that's orgasm right there. That's total, total orgasm. When people start repeating the lie as truth. You know, when victims start repeating the lie as truth, which I did my whole life. Yeah, I'm bad and I'm wrong. And she thanks for even talking to me. I don't deserve it. You see, they love that. Now I'm here to tell you I don't apologize. And that was all a lie. And my life was ruined with, with falsehoods like that. But when you're traumatized, you, you believe those things. So it's been a journey to come to the light of truth.
it's a journey to come to light of truth and then explain it to you because you've gone through the same thing I've gone through. I admit it. Being that it's society-wide, there's no one that isn't touched by it, by the criminality of the situation. And so then you wonder how we're going to survive here. Well, there is no solution with the psychopath. There is no solution possible. They're not going to change. You know, you, you, what they suggest in the video is changing your phone number, changing your location, and having no further contact, and just praying for better discernment in your future relations, you know, and get, you got to get over the trauma. Because see, what the trauma will do is it'll make you go find other psychopaths like that, and then the same pattern will repeat again. Because they'll interview you and they'll go, oh, you're the perfect victim. And then they'll start inviting you over to dinner or setting up. And then all of a sudden they'll pull the rug out from under you. And in your trauma, they all will jump you and then feed on you when you're, you know, traumatized or on the verge of committing suicide or the verge of, you know, when you feel real bad about yourself. And, you know, when you just are, are there as the total loser and you're just in suffering with all that pain that was caused by all these other people or other people or others or even one significant other, you know, they will jump to feed at that point because that's what they need to feed. Any questions? Uh, I think I'll call this, you know, surviving, you know, psychopath part two, you know, the ultimate, you know, psychopathic drama where you're, you know, your, 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 your significant others, uh, one of them somewhere is a psychopath. Yeah. In every family, there's one. <laughs> The, the most dangerous are the ones that become professional victims where they're always sick and everyone's always catering to them. Um, these do the most damage. These actually rack up the most, you know, strewn bodies across the battlefield. These are the ones who st stack up the most trauma. Because, you know, they, again, the easiest way to get victims would be to pose as a really weak, sickly person who needs help and who's been hurt by all life circumstances and, you know, and, and then, you know, they can reel people in as helpers. And then, you know, especially, you know, women doing this with men um, and men become the white knights to rescue them. Oh, my God, that's a whole other topic. And we could go on with that. But yes, there are many psychopaths that use that very thing and men that do it as well. Um uh, but it's a little different. They don't, they tend not to play that kind of game. They tend to be more like, uh, you know, perhaps the gang gang leader or something would be more the, like on the man side to have this sort of macho thing going and attract people that way and then, and then abuse them underneath. It's, it's really a little more straightforward than, than say on the woman side who would, you know, play this kind of Scarlett O'Hara type victim and, and then rake everyone over the coals. So, you, you know, uh, and, and all this is legal, except this idea of criminality, i.e. hiring, say, people to make a hit, uh, then, um, you know, then covering it up, you know, and so involved in that would have to be law enforcement and everybody else would have to be involved in covering it up. So that'd be, they'd have one of their people on the inside in every agency and they're very good friends with law enforcement. So it all works out, you see. Part of the deep, dark, dirty secret of our society. <clears throat> what do you think of that, folks? What do you think of that? What do you think of the world in which you live at this point? And don't tell me it's not like that. Do not tell me that it's more, you know, like all these Christian preachers on the web and all that. They're all trying to say that the Illuminati and the Illuminati kids and Illuminati mind control victims and like the Doug Riggs kind of thing. Like it's over here, it's over there, it's over there. Well, what an idiot that guy is. Don't people understand that it's, 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 it, he's either lying through ignorance and the rest of them that, that circle around the Doug Riggs is the world, you know. Uh, I use him as an example because he had these uh, church in Tulsa where he has these Illuminati mind control children of the Illuminati who are there trying to heal. Give me a break. He's just another guy feeding on them. Posing as this uh, religion. doesn't matter what religion it is. A guy like Riggs would be, you know, Buddhist. And if he was in China, he'd be, you know, they're all over the place, these kind of people. 
I mean, I don't know him well enough to actually accuse him of being a psychopath, but I mean, the red flags are up on that one. I did talk to him personally when he boasted about having all these people there. The red flags went up. I never talked to him again because I realized he was a perp. And he's, he's, he's tried to hide. He tries to hide that fact from people. He tries to discredit anyone who will ever, ever criticize him. He tries to discredit as being anti-Jesus. He has to be working for Satan. They do that a lot too. Religion has the most, probably, I don't know, it's kind of a toss-up, but religion attracts attracts them because they can be ministers in their own right pretty easily. In other words, they can prop themselves up on the web and they can do all this stuff. So they tend to be the psychopaths. Yeah, definitely. And they gather people in and they boast about having gathered these Illuminati multiples and how they're helping the multiples, how they're helping them. But usually you find out that they're always from wealthy families. They're always elite, right? You know what I mean? And he tried to recruit me. I got it finally. And there are still people out there. And, oh, well, if you want to know others, just look at his circle of friends. He's a minor sideshow, though, you know. The, the, the point is, is that if I had gone with Riggs and his Illuminati group in the church in Tulsa, I would have been repeating the same thing that had happened before, but transferring it, like when I transferred to a psychiatrist. You know, and they never helped me because they never would tell me the truth about all this. Nobody helped me. I mean, God helped me, but he's the only one, really, that could ever help me and is helping me to, um, well, like I say, it's a big step for me not apologizing for existing. I used to literally apologize to people for existing. I'm sorry. I don't want to be in your way. I'll just get out of your way. That's why, you know, I have, you know, canceled so many social things because I just feel like, you know, I just be in the way. You know, I shouldn't be there. I'm a bad person. All that is conditioning designed for the psychopaths to feed, designed to create a scapegoat, me, so that other people could put blame uh, and hide themselves from their evil deeds of things like theft, murder, sorcery, orgiastic stuff. And, uh, well, I mean, I could get into all that. And I will at some future date because it's, it's horrific. But, you know, look at the things I've done. I've done books like Glass Backwards, Lamb. I was involved in the movie Society, which they goofed up and they made into a stupid comedy, but it was actually a thriller. It actually, was original script was very literal. I've been trying to deal with this subject the whole time. In other words, trying to come to healing over the whole thing. And I've had to do it. I've had no help from humanity. No help whatsoever. In other words, you know... If I'm given anything, it's really as part of a cover up. I mean, it's, it's, I've had no help. It's been like kicking the teeth, kicking the teeth, kicking the shins, kicking the gut, post traumatic stress, traumatized, set up for a fall, set up for a fall, you know, excoriation on the internet, all kinds of stuff. But all the dude's trying to do is get his rug back, you know, seriously. I mean, that's all it comes down to in the end. Just want to find out what happened. I want to find out why, and I want to heal, and I want to live. I don't want to live in pain every day. You asked Trish, there are many nights, how many nights? I was trying to like watch a movie or something where I was just cringing and curled up in a ball saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm very, very sorry, I'm sorry. A 56-year-old man saying that. Can't enjoy watching the film, or even though the film was a programming too, but I couldn't, couldn't 
couldn't read a book, watch it. It just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, so I go make music to try to get away from that horrible sound of, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I ruined my parents' life. I'm sorry I ruined my brother's life. I'm sorry I ruined my friend's life. I'm sorry I ruined my teachers. I ruined everyone. I need to go away because I just, I'm no good. I need to go away. I'm no good. I'm no good. I, I, and thus crippled, crippled, handicapped, disabled, shunned, sidelined. And to repeat the paradigm, I go take the blame for everything or do something, you know, to get people to yell at me or whatever, to repeat it, to repeat because it became confused with love. In other words, negative feedback became love. Even into my 50s, you know, uh, still apologizing for breathing, still apologizing for being, even though Yahweh had lifted me up, God had lifted me up and taken me and put me in ministry and all that stuff, and still I had this thing that I had to keep dealing with, which I did cope with. I kept coping and coping and bringing words and teachings and things because the Lord could do it through me because I had no defense because this thing weakened me so much I had... Nothing to block me from saying what he wanted me to say. Therefore, I became a good preacher, teacher, whatever. Because of, in a way, this helped in that regard, oddly enough. He used it. Now, I no longer say I'm sorry. That's my big healing. That's my big praise report right now. I no longer say I'm sorry because I am not I am not the cause of everybody's suffering. I did not hurt my mother. I did not hurt people like they said. Through my bad behavior. That's wrong. That's a wrong thing. I did not hurt myself. I was traumatized and, and I needed to heal. And, and, and I needed to understand why. People would want to kill me at 17. I don't understand why. If I didn't do anything to anybody, why? And then I realized, I realized why. Because the psychopath is dead to the human side and irrevocable. The Bible calls the psychopath the second death. I get it. I see the parallel now. If you don't become that, then it doesn't matter if you do anything or not. They're going to start in on you unless you become one of them. It's just that simple. And that's why. And it's just that it doesn't take away the trauma. It doesn't take away the need for me. I mean, it was the biggest step in my life was just the last few weeks being able to say, okay, I'm not sorry. You know, I do have a right to live. I do have a right to exist. Uh, you know, I'm not going to apologize anymore. And you could ask Trish. I would sit there. I'll talk about it on Saturday when she's on the air. And uh, you'll see how many days and nights were spent apologizing. And then, uh, you know, then having to get through that trauma and then back to where I could, you know, preach a word. Because the Lord would then, like I say, use the trauma, use my weakness and my handicap as a way of uh, putting the word forth. I mean, just like in Lamb, he used a schizophrenic to be the prophet who was 100% accurate. Big step in my healing was I was uh, shopping this Albertsons market and um, they had a Starbucks inside and I wanted to get a, a get a you know a latte for uh, and uh, anyway so I you know went in there and ordered, you know, it, it, you had my basket and, you know, had some, I don't know, stuff in there. And uh, they asked me, uh, you know, how are you today? 
right? I mean, that's kind of common, you, you know, and how's your day going? And I said, oh, I'm traumatized and uh, I'm, I'm trying to work it out. I, I just spilt everything, just raw like that. That was a big step for me, not, not hiding it, you know. And they were shocked and horrified and <laughs> quit talking to me and, you know, got real busy making my coffee and then and, and steaming the milk. <laughs> um, but that was a big step for me to be able to say that. You know, yes, I'm traumatized and I'm and I'm and I'm hurt and I'm I'm uh, I'm surviving, but I'm, I'm I'm really in pain and you know I don't know how it's going to go, but it's it's not been so great so far. But uh, that's how things are going. If you want to know, if you ask me how are things going, that's the answer. I'm still traumatized. You know, still got PTSD or whatever. I, I still feel sorry. Okay. Uh, would you like, uh, uh, you know, uh, would you like an extra shot of espresso with that? <laughs> um, but like I said, that was a big step for me. I mean, that was, that was you know, I know that sounds weird. Uh, to do that publicly, but um, they did plenty of things to me publicly too. And all that was gang stalking, inviting me to a place when I was a kid, like to a party or something, designed to be a setup, then, you know, attack, humiliate, make a laughing stock out of, because, you know, uh, make me the opposite of cool to where I had to, you know, walk home humiliated. And, uh, but they were all in on it. The idea being that, you know, maybe that would help me change but it wasn't even a party. It was an arranged thing. And so all those kids who hurt me were employed in this gang-stalking effort to get me to die one way or the other. Either commit suicide or become a psychopath. One or the other, your choice. I should say psychopathic pervert because all psychopaths are perverts. All. All do perverted sex. All. In Obama's case, it's homosexuality. Um... You know, I don't know about the pedophilia aspect, but they all know about it and they don't do anything about it. So, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, I don't focus much on that aspect of it because, um, again, you become a fool when you, you know, there's so many of these Christians that focus on the sin, or like they get obsessed with homosexuality or this and that. And it even became a topic of the movie Red State, Critic you know, became an issue of sex. And that's not the issue. People are going to do, um, their sex. People are going to do perversions. I mean, everyone is capable of that and everyone can be gay and everyone can be, um, you know, everyone can do anything, you know. So so I don't want, I don't harp on that. It's not that. It's the idea of traumatizing the person, hurting another person. See, that's where I come in. Sex is a byproduct. But it just so happens the psychopath, according and according to the video, are all involved with perverted sex. The the From my experience growing up, the... the, the uh, they're all swingers. I mean, everyone around me, um, all the parents were swingers and they all had orgies. So, I mean, that was a constant. So that, yeah, and then they take pictures and... So, you know, and everybody does everybody. So there isn't anything about homo or hetero. It's everything is everything. You know, everyone's on top of everybody. And everyone who knows anything about it knows I'm right. Yeah, you know, knows I'm completely right. So there isn't any, you know, and look at Bohemian Grove. That's the funniest thing. It's a, it's a, it's this big, giant, homosexual bacchanal thing. And then they all go back to their, like, heterosexual thing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Everyone who's involved in that whole society, especially the Bohemian Club of San Francisco, which my grandfather is a prominent member of, um, you know, and, and, you know, obviously if anyone in business, if you want to be anybody who's anybody, you got to be a member of the Bohemian club. I mean, and absolutely they have these, you know, rituals. And he tried to tell me, you can't be ashamed of your body. He said to me when I was very young, you know, cause I remember my brother and I were changing. We, we, we camped out at some lake in the high Sierras and that he had a cabin there or something. And it was on a fishing lake. He had a house there too on another lake, but he had this was a good fishing lake. So we camped overnight there at the cabin 
And I remember that uh, my brother was, you know, like hiding his body. And uh, and my grandfather got really mad. He goes, are you ashamed of your body? You know, or something to that, you know, and he really, it really upset him because, you know, that's something you can't be. <laughs> and, and I thought, I wonder why he is like, you know, Rick is hiding in that way. And that was interesting to me. You know, Rick helped me to understand because he was more of a pure heart. So all the damage done to him um, completely, uh, you know, as a child, completely destroyed him as an adult. I, I did. Now I realize what I was looking at. And I, you know, again, Rick, my brother, harmed my parents by, you know, his death harmed them. You know, that he was... He, he wasn't, you know, it was his fault, but boy, what, you know, he, you know, he, he, he should be punished and forgotten about. I mean, that's horrible what he did. Well, no, no, it's tragic. I'm sorry. It's tragic. He died. It's horrible. He died be at the hands of a psychopath. This uh, woman that he had married was a witch who was involved in uh, satanic ritual, satanic ritual abuse, um, orgies, but, but especially Satanism. And um, he became um, her victim. You know, and he also became a path to, uh, you know, he had, an, uh, you know, an inheritance at that time. She stole that. I mean, they had a money motive to bump him off. But, um, and it got even more messy. That's more details of that I could I could bring out later. But, um, yeah, the death of Rick. And my mother didn't think I mourned him, you know, because I held my emotions back. But I certainly did. It's just that, that I didn't understand what was going on at the time. No, I didn't understand it. You know, I know that I got. Um, There's a whole financial thing that happened, too, that I've now coming to understand was a theft. But. Uh, yeah, the, the hands of his wife, it almost seemed like she was in cahoots with others to bring about this solution. And, uh, you know, let me just put it this way. People were relieved he was dead. They were. And he didn't do any harm to anybody. He was just trying to live his own life. But apparently he was some sort of... Sort of you know, uh, apparently he was, you know, in the way. And I'm telling you right now, there's a point to all of this. And the point to all of this is to say there will be blood. You know, in the breakdown of society and the riots to come. And these people are going to see their precious thing crumble. And, you know, Yahweh God is not going to let all this innocent blood and all these innocent victims who have been some made into scapegoats and everything else and blamed so the psychopaths can hide, you know, and remain hidden. I'll just tell you this. It's all going to come out in the wash one of these days. And um, on that day, there won't be a lot of living people. I mean, it's the, the things are going to go south because this sort of thing in society, if this is what rules our society, if this is what rules our elites in government and business and entertainment and so forth, then it has to go and it will go. But when it goes, it will be, and I will tell you this, it will be a horror. Thus saith the Lord, I will strike down this system and woe unto them who are still standing on that day. You and you out there will be witnesses to it. You know, unless there's some kind of repentance, unless there is some kind of, you know, um, acknowledgement that there's been, you know, crimes committed upon innocent people that, that have and blood crying up from the ground that has not been addressed until that day, you know, unless some kind of repentance goes forth, there, you know, we are headed toward a uh, 
complete societal collapse. And this nation will be replaced by the Chinese or other foreigners who will move in just like in Israel, just like the Israelites, who in the Babylonian captivity, they moved and took their house, houses and the gold and businesses. And other, other foreigners just took over Israel. Well, Babylon took over, but I mean, it, you know, the same thing will happen because Babylon still exists and there will be a bondage and a captivity. As far as the psychopaths concerned, their job is done. Thank you very much. They would actually, in a sense, welcome and I, I suspect the reason that we're still going is because they are working for a collapse. They would like to see very much that prophecy come to pass. So the collapse will not be exactly what they think, but some other kind of collapse that would be harmful to them specifically and not to those who are human. No, I don't consider the psychopathic personality human at all. A person that cannot feel empathy, who cannot feel guilt, who does not have a sense of remorse, who does not repent, who is proud of their of their of their um, orgies and murders and sorceries and the harm they've done and traumatizing their children and all everything else? Um, this is not human behavior. Human being feels pain, emotional pain, a traumatized pain for when things bad things happen to them. They feel guilt when they hurt their children or they hurt, hurt other people or their spouses or whatever, even if you hurt their feelings. You know, there's a sense they need to work it out. They feel guilty for being vain at times. You know what I mean? There's checks and balances in it, in a real human. But someone who is not intact doesn't have those to worry about. So there's no impediment stopping them from going right to the top. No, 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 no reason they can't emulate Machiavelli perfectly and even be more ruthless than him. Because there's no guilt. You know, there have been, you know, mob movies that have, you know, The Godfather, you know, certainly glorifies that sort of thing. A new movie I saw called Colombiana with Zoe Saldana, who does a very good job at becoming a killer, a hit woman, because she was traumatized by having her family killed, and then she went on the rampage. I mean, it all made sense. Luke Besson movie. I always like Luke Besson stuff. So I really enjoyed that movie. And, you know, you get, but you get an idea about, about, you know, becoming a cold, ruthless killer. Psychopath is different, though. There could be a cold, ruthless killer still somewhat intact. No, no, the psychopath is different. They're not like that exactly. They, they're not going to do their own killing. You see what I mean? No, they're going to be the the opposite of that. They're going to be the compassionate ones. They're going to be the 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 the, the, the sensitive ones. They're going to be the the uh, you know the the wise ones who can help lead to a, you know what I mean. It's the other people they are doing the killing. So uh, I got to get up at three o'clock in the morning to bring you this kind of message, so there's no filter between you and me. And um, Max is probably dead by now. The guy that uh, was the, the music teacher at a college in Colorado who uh, organized uh, his, you know, gang of boys to, uh, you know, get around me and drive me to this uh, state and then feed me with drugs and then put me into that, that situation. Yes, and what are the odds on us meeting up for real? Am I giving him a Bible and a, and a glass of wine, knowing who he is, but I didn't divulge who I was to him? What are the odds on that? I gave him a Bible. I tried to evangelize him. Eventually, he figured it out what running away. He was scared to death. I mean, obviously, he was scared of God is what, it, what must have happened. But a very prominent figure. He walked right into, I mean, I must have been like God's judgment or something. It triggered off his, 
all demise. I mean, imagine running into your a guy who would kill a child and ruthlessly set him up, thinking the kid thinking he's being a student and everything's okay. The next thing you know, you're in the hospital. Um, and, uh, and my parents are complaining, look what you've done to us. You've hurt us so badly. I did? And then later in life to find out who was responsible for paying for that. My heart is broken. And I am broken. And in so being broken, the Lord can use me to deliver truth. Any kind, any kind of interpretation of the Bible, any, anything, any scripture, anywhere, to cut to the bone on it rather than what the rest of them do, which I, I can't stand. But it's only because of this brokenness that I can do it. My talent is in my traumatized, broken state. No talent at all, in other words. It's, 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 you know, this lack of filtration, this lack of, you know, denial, I guess. And it's going to get sharper because I'm, you know, going to get better at it. But I mean, what's the, and what's the point of that? Every scripture is designed in the Bible to bring you and I and everybody and the world to a state of repentance so they could be saved so that they can be taken into eternity, so that they can escape the law of sin and death, so they can escape the punishment that has been put off but is sure to come to those who do not repent. That's the whole point of me being here. That's the whole point of this testimony. That's the whole point of what the scriptures have to say. That's the whole point of everything, to bring the world to a state of contrition and repentance and remorse so that they, and, and a warning, so they may take heed and live, so that, that, that they can see God is most merciful and will save them. But they have to first confess. And Billy Graham never confessed. And I'm sorry for him. Franklin Graham never confessed, and I feel sorry for him. The Evangelical Church and the Evangelical Church Association never confessed. The psychopath loved it when I was actually going to church. They thought, oh, a late bloomer. This will finally work now. Making church a mausoleum rather than an actual place of life. Where they go on and on about how evil homosexuality is. I mean, that's got to be a red flag since they're all involved in it. I don't know. I, I, you know. What can I say? What, what can anyone say at this point? I mean, what can any reasonable person conclude? Do we watch Fox News in horror and like, oh, look, California is going off the cliff. You know, are we going to be watching Fox News when they report the um, riot police and uh, police state and, you know, martial law? And, oh, look at that. Now, are we going to be surprised every time we see anything happen? Mob stalking and mobbing going on in these uh, stores and looting and things. The lawlessness rising. Eventually, prisoners let out of the prisons in California because they can't keep them. And that was right out of my book. Lamb, Lamb prophesied that. They're going to be let out of prison. They already are. And they're going to end up, you know, running the streets. Are we going to watch Fox News and go, oh my God, something should be done about that? Are we going to blame Obama? You know, which is, again, inaccurate because it's a system thing. It's not just him. He's the, the, you know, the temporary puppet, you know, in charge of nothing. He reads a script. He doesn't even write, say his own words. He's completely fabricated. Are we going to keep marveling over all this? Believe you me, I'm not surprised by any of it because that it's always been theater and confusion for me. Theater and confusion. Theater and confusion. Theater and confusion. 
you know, purposely confuse them, give them theater, that they'll shut up. They'll they'll think they're 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 for real. They'll think that none of this is it's on them. They're never gonna they're never gonna figure it out. Is the point? They're never gonna figure out. You know, nine eleven or you know the the debacle in Europe or the banking crisis or they're never gonna figure out the the the, the coming collapse of California. They're never gonna figure any of that out. As to what the how it relates to them individually. And their part in it. They're, it's their compartmentalizer. They're going to figure out. And I can tell you that if you are in Christ. And if the Lord God will open your eyes. He will figure it out for you. And he will show it to you. But I, on that day you have to be ready for it. Or he won't show you. Because you would again. If it's going to just traumatize you rather than heal you. Then what's the point in having your eyes open? If it's going to be one big, oh, there's no Santa Claus, say it ain't so, Joe, and you're going to be broken uh, in, in, a, in, in a personal, in a way God can't use, he won't open your eyes. But if you can be broken, if your eyes are open and say it ain't so, Joe, and, you, and you're, your heart is broken, and then, you know, it's one thing to be heartbroken because the individual family is dysfunctional, let's say. But then when you see it's not dysfunctional at all, but this is the way all society is functioning, it all fits together beautifully then you're really broken when you see that. And then when you mention that, they'll say, you need professional help. You are psychotic if you make those connections. They almost say it now if you if you question 9-11, um, that, you know, for example, Building 7 fell because of the plane that hit the other towers. If you don't agree with that, that you're almost sent to the shrink now by everybody. If you say there was something wrong with the Pentagon or the the, the Shanksville or whatever the uh, the uh, Flight ninety three went down, if you you know the the thing about that is the you know, could the people that shot that plane down be presiding over the ritual that was given that day? I mean, could it be that bad? Could Satan be laughing, having the people going uh huh uh huh? The perpetrators are standing there, giving the eulogy for the and the memorial. And the people are agreeing and nodding and thinking how terrible it is that uh, when it could have just been a shoot down to prevent witnesses from coming forth. I mean, to me, I haven't looked much into it. I don't really care one way or the other, but it doesn't surprise me, you see, if it was a shoot down. It wouldn't surprise me if Building 7 was pulled or even all three of the buildings were pulled by uh, people like Larry Silverstein and, the, and you know, the, the CIA or whoever else is involved in the thing. I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it was all, uh, you know, a military PSYOP hit and a false flag attack. It doesn't surprise me because that's, the, that's a bigger macrocosm of the way the microcosm works. In other words, it's it's no different than it was in my upbringing. I saw the same kinds of things done, you know, on a, on a different scale, but all the same way the news media, everything, the, the way it all worked together is the same as what I've seen all my life. So if that's the case, um, at this point, when someone is a 9-11 truther, they are a psycho. They're a nut job, even in the most conservative circles. Thus, the psychopaths go undetected. Life goes on. But I, get, I guarantee you, if the, the longer this thing goes on and the longer the, 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 the system grows in that way, the more um, dangerous it is to human life on Earth. The more the perpetrators get away with stuff, the more dangerous it is. They don't care. Let me just put it this way. Obama and company and the, and the world and the banks and everything, they don't care about your finances. They don't care about your health care. They don't care about any of it. It's about power, money, and control, period. And that is what I learned from my youth and my upbringing and my trauma and my being around these people. And this, this is what I've gleaned. 
They just don't give a damn about you. I think George Carlin came to the same conclusion. And, you know, George, if you were around today, I would tell you this. You know, you said you're not in there. They're in this club and you're not in it. To be in it, George, you'd have to be a psychopath. You wouldn't want to be in that club. Believe me. You'd have to be, in other words, the thing that made you human would have to be gone. Now, I know one thing in terms of abusive children. They, 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 the, the whole, all the things that are done to the children, you know, are done to traumatize them so that they can then become those psychopaths of tomorrow. You can't have guilt, shame, humiliation, a sense of zero worth, a loser mentality or any of those things, and, you know, go forward. You'd be a, a drag, a burden on the, on the rest. That's why they get rid of you. No, you got to get with it. In other words, you know, no guilt, no shame, no apology. You know, what's done to you, you do to others, etc. And it, it, it perpetuates, it perpetuates and perpetuates. Until finally the whole society collapses through decadence and through perversion and corruption. And then, you know, there's a, the aftermath, you know, Mad Max, the, the rise of barbarianism, whatever, uh, you know, um, the Book of Eli, right? And then the restructuring of society all over again, uh, the stand, Stephen King. And they do the same thing over again because we're in a human fallen condition. So, yes, I forgive all. All significant others, parents, brothers, sisters, friends, teachers, coaches who are just also part of the whole matrix of it. All that forgive. I forgive it all. You know, in, in being at the brunt of, of the joke, I guess. Looking back on it, someone had said to me, well, wouldn't it have been better had, you know, and then the answer is, you mean be dead but be animated? <clears throat> like an like a living corpse rather than just be dead no the bible talks about overcoming to overcome you have to remain intact to remain human all this stuff you know all in a way all the stuff that was done to me i was able then through that to discern what it all is about in other words to to, to figure it all out And, you know, they do stuff to people. It's like they, 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 they do stuff to people, then but to eliminate witnesses, then they eliminate that person, then it goes on. You can't do that. Um, people come on the Internet. If any, 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 anything um, were to harm me at all, it would be just very, very clear who, what, where, and why. Exactly. It will be a big light on the entire thing. And so that's, they don't want to do that. With Bryce Taylor, they just let that thing go, right? Nobody commented on it and, you know, she didn't get anywhere with it. And they just blacked it out because if they kind of, but probably the book helped her survive. Because had they, you know, whacked her or whatever, um, then it would be very clear. Everything in that book is true. And then that would be blasted all over everywhere. But my question keeps coming back to this. Why? How could parents really do these things to their children? How can friends turn other friends over to be set up and kill? How can people learn at such a young age to be so evil? And how then can they have a life after that all the worse because they'll never be uh, um, accused by law enforcement of anything and have everyone scared to death and everyone have a gun at everybody's head and, and be able to blackmail everybody so nobody makes a move and this thing gets worse. How are we going to go forward as a society, in other words, with this situation as a cancer on our society and these people as a blight? 
how come they keep getting promoted if they don't give a damn about anybody or anything and they just as soon see you dead on a collective basis? How the heck are we going to survive this? That's more the question today, and this is where the, the, the you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything unless it can come to the wider picture of you and me and all of us. You know, this conversation needs to be had with all of us. How in the world are we going to go forward when this reality is poisoned and destroyed, you know, almost everything, including kicking God out of society and prayer? I mean, I mean, once you get to that point, I mean, it's just a matter of mere moments before there's a lockdown on free speech and, and, and everything else. I mean, at what point does society admit this particular psychopathic reality as a mode, modality of initiation into, say, the dark side, if you will, that if unchecked, which still is publicly, has Glenn Beck confessed any of this? Uh, well, how about Sean Hannity? How about Rush Limbaugh? I haven't heard a peep out of them. But I know they know. How about Roger Ailes of Fox News? How about Rupert Murdoch? How about... Uh, you know, Wolf Blitzer, how about anybody? No, we just kick the can down the road to the next generation. And in so doing, we ensure the deaths of our children and grandchildren. Or, you know, one way or the other, whether becoming a psychopath, that's death, or the second death. And uh, meaning, you know, it's it's a satanic... Well, I'm I'm putting it in psychological terms, but... Really, we know what it really is. It's initiation into the dark side, into Satanism and all that stuff. But we can speak about it in a, in another, in a secular way. That, that's what that video gave me. It gave me the ability to look at it in a secular kind of way, which helped to widen and make more, more, more accessible the message. How are we going to go forward as a society with this in place? With what they say conformity is, when that is actually... Um, murder, perversion, and death. I mean, you know, murder, perversion, and psychopathology. Ultimately, that's what it. That's all about. How can we go forward with that? Can if we, you want to have conformity, it should be to Christ. If you want to have conformity, it should be to to goodness, to Judeo Christian principles, for example, to the law of God, to the Torah, to to what is good in life, not conformity to what is evil. So that, you know, so that you can then succeed. What the hell is that? It's completely backwards. That will do nothing but breed a society that's dysfunctional and eventually falls apart. It is very important that if you want to stop the Armageddon to come on this society, Europe, or anywhere else in this world, where, I mean, real pain and suffering, real tyranny... You know, this Joseph Stalin's, the Adolf Hitler's, that sort of thing. You want to stop that from that cycle from happening again, it has to be stopped at the root. It's, it's, Adolf Hitler was just one of many in German society, not a single individual. Without enabling from everyone else, he wouldn't have been there. So obviously, German society had a deep, dark secret. But going unchecked, it produces Adolf Hitler. And eventually will produce another one. On the other hand, I could just say, okay, go with it, baby. And yeah, here's where the pure hearts go. They wind up on drugs and dead. Musicians like Jimi Hendrix and, uh, you know, uh, Jim Morrison. Uh, and later on, you know, two decades later, Lane Staley and, and Kurt Cobain. And, and it goes on and on and on. You know, John Lennon and on and on and on. These people are people that are artists. They started out on the dark side. Then they figured it out, what they were a part of, and then they started getting ready to squawk, and then all of a sudden they're not there anymore. That's the way I look at it. Okay, enough for today. I'm fatigued. You know, I never got enough sleep. I guess this was uh, another message that had to come out. We've, we've gone again, folks, so over two hours. You've gotten uh, nothing but... Um, and yeah, the, uh, you know, check it, uh, Angie, uh, Sister Angie, the, uh, looks like the numbers are going up, you know, a couple thousand anyway, uh, in the, um, you know, the listenership, uh, 
since we've been back. It's been so there's, you know, obviously new people listening. And uh, I know that you people are trying to figure out society, too. You're trying to figure out our existence as well and what we're dealing with. And maybe this podcast can give you another perspective on it, you know. Um, but you're going to get it through the lens of, of a, you know, a minister, a preacher of Yahweh, and, and, and one who is broken and yet whole in him and nowhere else. And uh, you're going to get it through that spiritual point of view. You're not going to get it secular for me because I don't have any life as a secular person. I don't have any ability to be um, without God. I don't have any ability to not put it through the lens of Scripture. I don't have any ability to not put it through the lens of, of, of my faith. I don't have any ability to put it because I don't exist outside that because the, the world broke me in a million pieces. Um, a basket case, a psychological wreck, un, unable to take care of myself, you know, crippled. Understand? You know, broken. You know, permanently broken. And, uh, you know, I, I could talk about how it happened, why it happened, where it happened, and all those things, you know, um, but, but it doesn't do any good unless you understand the whole picture, which is that there were many people involved in that, and I just, you know, my problem was I was, you know, according to them, is I was too sensitive, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I too forthright, I just didn't believe that, that, I just didn't believe there could be anything like that happening, so I always denied it when I saw it, even if it was in front of my face. I would say that, no, nothing like that's really real. I'm just screwed up, or I'm on drugs, or it's me, it's me, I'm bad, and then I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, I guess, what protected me, in a way, was this idea that that it must be me, you know, I must be mentally ill. Uh, you know, this couldn't be, and and... Well, I guess that's what a child does, you know. If he can't understand it, if it's so evil he can't comprehend it, he puts it on himself. So, you know, he must be the problem because nothing like that could exist because this world's not that bad. It couldn't be. Or what would be the point of mom and apple pie and baseball? I mean, if it, it's like that, who who could even get to the field to play? Well, why wouldn't we just all cry for a million years, you know, and just throw ourselves in sackcloth and ash and beg the Lord for forgiveness? I mean, you know, it's, well, you, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? God bless you, each and every one of you. I sense there are people out there who are really being fed by this, and, 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 and yet at the same time, you sorrow. Fed, but sorrow. Fed and sorrow. Fed, so I am sorrowful too. I don't feel so great either. I'm I'm to the point now where I just tell people at Starbucks I'm traumatized and broken and screwed up. But but I know the truth and you know I'm I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to apologize for for what was done to me. I'm going to take responsibility and do the best I can given the uh, handicap of the situation. No, I have the right to live. That's my I keep going back to that. I have the right to live. In this country, I have the right to speak the truth, which I know is the most pornographic thing in the world is, is actually the truth. Pornography is lauded by they love it, you know, but the truth, no, that's that's hatred. Anyway, I'm going to speak the truth about it. And, you know, no, I denounce the, uh, the Christian ethos, uh, the way that they portrayed it, the way they portray it in the media and the way that they, uh, you know, the, 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 the characters out there who are misleading the flocks and not getting to the root, the nub of all these, the, the thing that really matters and the religious people and all that, filled with psychopaths because those people seek power. They do it through Christianity and everything. So I have to almost separate myself from Christianity, but not from the Lord Yahweh, Jesus Christ, one, the Lord creator, God, who looks over me and his scriptures, you know. I... You know, my heart was broken when I went to church and they started in the same thing as what happened in my youth, the same attempt at humiliation and, 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 and character assassination and all the nasty things that went on. I broke my heart completely. And then asking us to, um, you know, uh, do perverted sex and church setting and all that. I just, I couldn't, I, you know, preying upon the youth and the youth group, which we saw them doing and 
getting complaints from some of them that they're going to call their lawyers because they've been harassed to take their clothes off. Oh, my God. In a youth group, in, in Calvary Chapel or whatever, this is going on? That blatant, and then there's no investigation, no law enforcement? I mean, it's absurd. It's insane. Oh, we have, you know, somehow the investigation gets quashed or, you know, we've been investigating, but, you know, nothing definitive yet. It's okay. You see, the reason is it's okay is because it's society-wide. It's, it's a much bigger problem than one church somewhere in the, in the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. It's bigger than that. Um... I don't know what's going to save this nation. I don't know what's going to save this world. I, you know, I mean, I do know. I mean, it's God Yahweh saving the individuals, but I don't know what's going to save this, you know, the nation, the, 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 the you know, the EU, the uh, Canada, you know. I don't know what's going to save these nations and these people. I don't know what's going to stop it from going to the Mad Max scenario that Mel Gibson was a part of so many years ago. I don't know what, what's going to stop this civilization from destroying itself in world war coming up. I don't know what's going to save California from going off the cliff as they've done. They can't help themselves. They, they're just going to, I guess, I, I just don't know. Do you? How? I can't figure it out logically. Well, on the other hand, here's something delightful to think about. How about the fact that it's still going now, even despite all this, where it should have been Mad Max a long time ago? We can look at that as evidence that God, Yahweh, is a most merciful and loving God. Yes, 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 absolutely. He's holding it back so that his children can, won't be in hardship right now, that they can, you know, they'll get to an answer that they'll get to know. But, you know, there'll be a day where you need to know all the things I've said to you, you know, and more even, you know, so that when the things happen, you won't be traumatized. That's the point. When you know, like if something bad happened right now, would it traumatize me? No way. I know the truth. I'm traumatized from the earlier things. It blows my mind that children, you know, could be hated that much that they, you know, but then I understand, you know, you, you, you know, these groups, if you have a group of psychopaths and someone who isn't, I mean, they're going to either that one becomes one or, you know, or guess who's going to be the next victim. I understand. I get it. Sure. Law of the jungle makes sense. Makes sense. It's rational. It's been an awfully long time, my friends, since someone has written to me or come to me and, you know, in a chat or something and said, come on, Z, you know, you, you, this is just over the top. I haven't had that. I, I long for it. I, I just wish to God someone would show up and prove me wrong. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. You would, you would, that Disneyland is okay. You know, and if you would do that, I would be, but I don't think that's gonna, I'm not that, that gullible, but I don't think that day is going to happen anymore. I mean, people used to do that a long time ago, you know. But it's been eight years since I've had something like that. And believe you me, I long for it. I long to, in a way, to jump back in the mind control and have the kind of rosy outlook and, you know, positive attitude and, you know, that, that uh, you know, it's good and bad kind of playing together. But, you know, in, in general, you know, we're, we're getting better as human beings and our society's getting better. We're learning more and we're going to cure these diseases, you know, that it's all good. You know, I, I just wish, I pray that I could go back to that. But see, during the time where I was sort of like that, it was like, I'm a bad guy, but society is good. You know what I mean? I'm lousy, a loser, but society is good. I'm, you know, obviously psychologically damaged from whatever happened to me in childhood, but society is good. I'm crippled from whatever happened, but society is good. You see, now I realize, now I'm not, you know, really crippled because I'm whole in Yahweh. I'm broken as a lamb, which you have to be, or the Lord can't use you. Watching all the people who are not broken playing churchianity, all the people who are not contrite playing churchianity, all the people boasting and prideful playing churchianity, all the people lying about collecting multiples and all that, you know, what the hell is that? 
Well, I know what it is. I know what it is. And I'll call it what it is. But it does not portend well, folks. As Jeremiah like might do, I say, this nation is in bondage and going into total bondage. Thus saith the Lord. Because this nation is unrepentant about its egregious sins against the Lord and because it violates Matthew 18, 6 all day long and uh, and, and sacrifices babies to Molech all day long and worships the idol of Satan in the form of an obelisk in the Washington Monument all day long. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will not bless this nation, but bring the enemies to bring it down. I'll bring Islam to bring it down. I'll bring terrorism to bring it down. I will do something. I'll, I'll make it internal. I'll bring it a police state to bring it down from within. I'll bring a depression to, to bring it down from within. Until unless these people repent. You tell them, son, to repent. Okay, I just told you. Repent. For the day of the Lord is at hand. A, a horrible day. And you don't want to see that. Repent. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll get me along. You know, I should get a placard. Go stand on the corner in New York City. Repent. For the, t you know, the time is near. Repent. <laughs> Just as Jeremiah spoke to the king, I suppose I should speak to the king. When are they going to call me up? Don't you guys want to know what's going to happen? Maybe the Lord would give me a prophecy for you. Who are you going to get it from? Billy Graham? Franklin Graham? Is he going to give you a prophecy? How about the Reverend Sung Young Moon? Is he going to give you a prophecy? How about, uh, you know, Deepak Chopra? Is he going to come and give you a... I mean, there's a living joke. There's a complete, total, hysterical guffaw, guffaw, buffoon. Buffoon. Absolute buffoon who, who, who you guys have made rich because he says such niceties that won't offend you so you can be your little guru. But, you know, you're not going to go to him on a time of need, are you? You're going to go to him when a time when you need to confess before the Lord and when you need to get right with your God. Are you going to go to Deepak Chopra? You've got to be kidding me. A little meditation, a little incense, a little massage work, maybe a facial. Are you kidding? You're going to go to... I was going to get out of here, but I'm, I'm, I'm raging on. You're going to go to... Uh, uh, let's see, who else? I'll have a prayer meeting in, in the West Wing. Barack Baby. Maybe you could have a little ecumenical prayer, a little Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, uh, Sikhism, a little, uh, maybe a little Sufi dance, and hey, you know, put it all together in a little cauldron and stir it up, and you're going to feel great. Where are you going to go? The little chapel out there in D.C. with all the gargoyles? Where are you going to go? Are you going to go to Jeremiah Wright? Goddamn America, that guy? And he's going to tell you about all the evils of Hiroshima, how we deserve to get our butts kicked with a nuclear war. Or... <laughs> you know, does he have a real knowledge of the spirit? Going to go to Jesse Jackson? He's really a deep minister, huh? How about the Reverend Al Sharpton? You know, listing all the black guys. Okay, I've, I've already listed the white guys. Here's the black guys. You going to go to any of these people? And the Indian guy. Joel Olstein. Joyce Myers. Where are you going to go? You're dead spiritually, Washington, D.C. That's the whole point. You're completely bereft. Where is anybody going to go in elite culture? You know, to your church in Beverly Hills? And I'm sorry. I believe that Catholic Church is on Bedford, not on Rodeo Drive. It's on Bedford. What's on Rodeo is the, I believe the Rodeo is the uh, the 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 uh, Presbyterian Church, I think, and then the All Saints Church is on, uh, is it Roxbury or Camden or one of those? I'm sorry, I got it mixed up, but uh, I had gone to the All Saints Church in Beverly Hills. Um, Last time I was there, my father was eulogized. I wrote the eulogy for my dad, and I totally, totally wrote a, a fluff piece that was designed to make all his friends there feel good. 
And I, I now regret it. I should have just gone on and grabbed the mic and started preaching to these people of what's going to happen to them. I know they would have hauled me off to the local loony bin, but you know what? It would have been an act of courage. Dang it. And I do not apologize. I no longer apologize. Uh, you know, ever since my daughter was here, she would punch me if I started getting into that mode again. If I started slipping back into that mode, she'd start punching me. So I quit it. And I, re- I worked it through and I realized, oh my God, I've been apologizing my whole life for something I, that I didn't do to myself, that I didn't do. They really had me going. I guess it's some of you feel I should be embarrassed for having spoken to you for a decade here on the air and having healed before you, coming to you broken and without, you know, props and, you know, being naked before you like Isaiah in my own way. I'm more naked than Isaiah ever was. I'm not saying I'm a better prophet or anything like that or better in any way than, you know, he paid the ultimate price for his faith and, you know, for no reason too, you know, which is always the the way, you know, he didn't do anything wrong to anybody. But he preached naked for, you know, what, three years, three and a half years, something like that. The reason you're getting this message is so that you will be equipped to deal with the world as it gets more bizarre in the future. So you will not be traumatized by it. You'll be ready for it. You have been here on this broadcast prepared for anything. And it may have taken 10 years to do it, but those of you who've been around, um, and you know, the archives don't go back all the way to 2002 right now. They don't go back all the way to 2001 or even 2000. I had audios from 2000. Sorry about that. But there's enough meat on the bone there that you can get a good meal. Meat in due season, I guarantee you, you'll get that going through all the archives. And you'll see yours truly having grown and gotten older. And I'm, I'm basically a senior citizen right now, pretty much. You know, I'm a survivor. You know, I've survived all the way to now. I don't, you know, at this point, it's sort of moot. It, it, at 17, it, you know, maybe they think now they would have been better to off me. Maybe some of you think. But at this point, eh, it's, it's too late. It's a win-win no matter what happens at this point. The, see, I live through you people going on, you know, even though I've gotten old. And, you know, my daughter moving on. And you're going to get old too. But the fact that she moved on and she got out. And she got away. She has a life elsewhere. I am healed in that. Don't you get it? I that's my healing. I'm not looking for any anything more than that. That that is plenty. That's a gift the Lord's given me that uh, has made my whole life happy. You know, um, I'm not saying she doesn't suffer, but I'm, the fact that she knows it all and she's out there and functioning, and able to go about her life in peace, and and is far, 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 far away from all the stuff I've described. Um, It is wonderful, you know, uh, she did not survive the interview to become the next victim. She's, you know what I mean? She has always seen that she was uh, strong in her faith, strong in her walk, and she's not going to trust anyone that wants her to confide with their secrets and all that, you know, that was her test, and, you know, she survived, went on, and, you know, like I say, has a life elsewhere, because she's always been out there since she was, like, one years old. She's never lived in the United States. She's a dual citizen, but she's lived in, you know, in Italy and and uh, in Europe um, since about one and a half years old. You know, she got out. That is my healing. Let's see? And that's my joy. That 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 was the answer to my prayer. And if she goes on, you know, great. She's been delivered out. I remember I baptized her when she was 12 years old. That's the point. We have a very good relationship. You know, we Skype all the time. And thank, that's why I have the iPhone, so I can Skype her and we keep in contact. But, you know, um, the idea is not uh, for me to bring her here for another visit. The idea is for me to go there wherever she ends up. I don't know, you know. 
we'll see. But uh, that's my joy, the fact that, you know, nothing can happen now that could pull her. You know, she's gotten emancipated enough so that these things, this this family curse, if you will, can't, you know, touch it. She may create her own troubles and have to solve them and she, and all those things could happen. Other people can hurt her, you know. I just got to pray that she's protected, she lives and she moves on and maybe not even talk about her if all the witches are tuning in wanting to do bad things. Who, what witch in the world would want to light a candle now or burn an effigy now or stick a pin in something now? I mean, how dare you? Don't you have any humanity left? Are all you witches psychopaths? Is that it? I mean, after all this and after all the pain and suffering, isn't now finally the time for you to repent and to give up your witchcraft and, 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 and accept your creator as your God and, and be cleansed and be set free and renewed with a real life? that goes on eternally, isn't it time for you now to realize you can't win that game of, of manipulating people and breaking things and doing... You can't play God, which is... You're just going to screw everything up. Isn't it now time for you to start praying and stop sticking pins in things? Stop trying to find articles of hair, pieces of clothing to throw in your circles? It, it Look, all that is seen by God. He hates that. He was watching you right now. It's going to be on videotape. It's going to be played before the whole world. Everything you've done, every perversion, you've done, all this stuff. You put, pass yourself off as an innocent little girl and yet you're doing all this stuff. How would you like that blasted at the Super Bowl? That's not the point. You don't live. You die. You don't live. You know, the the plug ends up being pulled and you die in sorrow, pain, sorrow. As Jezebel, one of the ultimate witches, she was eaten by her own dogs. Some people, the dogs are in the form of servants and they're going to be eaten by those. You know, it, you know, it's all about getting money for witches and stuff and getting power. Well, what what point is it when you have to play God? You can't hold the world up forever. You can't hold it up forever. You're going to get weak and then another one's going to come clip you. I mean, it's dog eat dog in that world. Isn't it time to lay it down at the cross and be set free? I expect a letter because one of you is going to get set free and that's the most important thing. Hope all of you are set free. In Jesus' name, I bid you shalom, shalom, Zef Daniel, over and out.